Hi, welcome back to this final um, video on free field theory, the path integral. So we've established the formula z zero j is equal to e to the i over two, the integral d four x d four x prime j x del x minus x prime j x prime and this is the Feynman propagator. I won't rewrite the definition again. Now we can do exactly what we did with the harmonic oscillator. We can take derivatives and get time-ordered products. And the general formula, just like with the harmonic oscillator, is the uh, vacuum expectation value between time-ordered time field products Okay, so what I want to do is just show how this formula works and how it applies because functional um, differentiation might be new to a lot of people and they get confused exactly how it works. But what this formula says is the time ordered product, the, the, the vacuum expectation value of a time ordered product of field operators is going to be equal to 1 over i times the functional derivative with respect to the source for one of the operators and then we continue differentiating and we evaluate it at j equals zero. So let me just show you how that works for the case of um, the two-point function which is basically the propagator. Now, when we evaluate this, we have to take all these derivatives and then set j equals zero. We don't take one derivative and set j equals zero and then take another derivative. This means take, evaluate this expression completely and then set j equals zero. So let's see how this works. Let's start with the first part of it. One over i del del j x1 of z zero j is equal to so I'm going to have this one over i and now we're taking a derivative of an exponential function so we're always going to get this exponential factor and I'm going to write this as just e to the i over 2 the integral of um, j del j so and notice whenever we set j equals 0 at the end, this becomes 0, e to the 0 becomes 1. So if we have any factors like this left over at the end, they become 1. So I have 1 over i, and now I have to take the functional derivative of this exponent with respect to jx1. So this becomes i over 2, the integral d4x, d4x prime, and there's two places where we can I can differentiate using the formula del jy del jz equal to del y minus z. So that's all it is. Um, this delta is a Dirac delta function and so it's the same thing as saying, you know, uh, if we have variables like x1 dot 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 xn, the derivative of xi with respect to xj is equal to Kronecker delta, del i 
j, in the continuous case, we get this. Here we have continuous indices on our variables, and so we have a continuous delta function. Okay. So this is now equal to delta x minus x1 Feynman propagator x minus x prime j x prime plus delta x prime minus x1 jx delta x minus x prime. Okay, and again we're going to all evaluate this at j equals zero. So, this is just a integrating over a delta function, so that's about as easy as we can do. So we're going to end up getting 1 over i, i over 2, the integral of d4 x prime delta x1 minus x prime, because this thing says set x equal to x1, so it becomes x1 minus x prime, j of x prime plus um, the integral of d4x, the second term over here, delta x minus x1, j of x. Okay, and then we still carry this thing, keeps coming down. So, If you look at these two, you can realize they're the same. If you just set x equal to x prime, these things are actually the same. So this becomes the 1 over i cancels the i. The 2, we're going to have two terms. So this just becomes the integral of d4x delta of x minus x1 j of x e to the i over 2, the integral of j del j, evaluated at j equals 0. So that's one derivative. Now if we were trying to evaluate the one-point function, we'd set j equals 0 now. This becomes 1, but then we have a j over here, so it becomes 0. So the vacuum expectation value of just the uh, time ordered of one field is just 0 which is what we want. And basically, if you remember that a, a field like phi consists of some integral of a and a dagger with other terms, not relevant, and the, uh, the a will kill the vacuum on the right, the a dagger will kill the vacuum on the left. So this all makes sense. Now, continuing on, 1 over i del jx2 1 over i del del jx1 z0 j evaluated at j equals 0 is equal to now we're going to take a derivative of this so we get the 1 over i now you have to differentiate this and you have to differentiate that Differentiating this won't matter. It will bring down terms like we did before, but we still have this term j. And when we eventually set j equals zero, that whole term vanishes. So we don't have to worry about that term. We take the derivative of this term. And then again, the derivative of jx2 of jx is going to give me a delta function. We're going to, and so the end result, that's going to give me a delta function. When we take the derivative of this, we're going to get delta of x minus x2, and when we integrate over anything, we end up getting 1 over i delta of x2 minus x1. So, 
the way to get the um, time ordered product of vacuum expectation values, we end up getting 1 over i times the propagator. And I'll write down, you can do this with, keep on doing this, the general rule, 0 time phi x1 phi x2 phi x3, this is the four point function, this is going to be equal to 1 over i squared times del x1 minus x2 del x3 minus x4 plus delta x1 minus x3 delta x2 minus x4 plus delta x1 minus x4 delta x2 minus x3. And um, we can continue this and we end up getting Wick's theorem. Now, just looking at this, you can sort of see, next time we'll show the importance of these vacuum expectation values. But basically what's going on here is the two-point function, we just have something like this. It's just the propagating propagation from here to there and it's related to like let's say this is x1 I shouldn't really put these sources in here so may not always have sources so this is the propagate propagation of a meson scalar particle from x1 to x2 is related to del x1 minus x2. And this is free field theory. There's no interactions or anything. Now the second one was something like we have uh, more particles. We have four fields, so it's like we have four particles. So we have x1 goes to x2, x3 goes to x4. And then the next term is like x1 goes to x4, or these are symmetric. There's no interaction here. These, it's a free theory. And then we have So these are like three ways in which particle, free particles can go from one to another. Two particles can go to two different particles. So you can see the beginning of what are the famous Feynman diagrams. And the Feynman diagrams are just a way to organize what is a very complicated perturbation expansion. And in the next lecture, which is probably the most critical of the book, we will discuss, we will interacting field theory and the path integral and how it leads to Feynman diagrams, symmetry factors, and then in the chapter after that they'll relate it all to cross sections. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.